Let me get you up to speed. My name is Veronica Simon. I'm an office administrator at my place of work. And today is like any other Tuesday. Good afternoon, this is Veronica. How may I help you? There is going to be a bomb today. In a bomb threat call, the best thing you can do is to remain calm and keep the caller on the line for as long as possible. Your goal here is to obtain as much information as possible from the caller so you can relay this information to the authorities. If you have a moment, write a note to someone nearby. I'll get one of my co-workers' attention, and they can contact the authorities to inform them that a bomb threat call is in progress. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? There is going to be a bomb today. People are going to die. Now that I've alerted my co-workers about the threat, they can activate our bomb threat management plan and call 911 from a safe location. If your employer doesn't have a plan yet, you can go to www.dhs.gov slash OBP for more information and to find this checklist. Next, I'm going to ask the caller a series of questions from this checklist, remembering to be as polite as possible and demonstrating the same amount of respect I would normally provide anyone else. Sir, when is the bomb going to explode? In one hour, if all operations in your institution have not ceased. Don't forget to listen for background noise. Hear those cars passing by in the background of the call? Make a mental note of anything you hear so you can mark it down later after the call. Next, I'm going to ask the caller where the bomb is located. In doing so, as with all these questions, I'm going to avoid prompting the caller with names or locations of the facilities which will provide more clues about the identity of the caller and the validity of the threat. If he provides a specific place or building, he may be familiar with the location and vice versa. Okay, and where is the bomb located? <coughs> Inside the main lobby. Did you hear the caller clear his throat there? Make another mental note of any irregularities in the caller's voice or speech patterns so we can mark that down later as well. Okay, sir, and what does the bomb look like? It's inside of a black duffel bag. Black duffel bag. All right. And what will cause the bomb to explode? I will detonate the bomb in one hour if my demands have not been met. Sir, did you place this? Hello, sir? After the caller hangs up, it's important that I don't hang up my phone. Instead, I'll place it on my desk jot down in as much detail as possible information from the call. Towards the bottom of the card, there's a checklist for details about the caller's voice, any background noise, and the threat language. Here's where those mental notes from earlier really come into play. Information like this can be crucial in identifying the caller and legitimacy of the threat. Last but not least, I'm going to note the number the call was received from, as shown on my caller ID. After I'm done making notes, it's time to share my information with my leadership and local authorities. I'm going to avoid touching any switches or buttons of any kind. I'm going to avoid using my cell phone unless I have no other choice, in case it might detonate the bomb. So you took the call. Tell us what you know. The caller had a deep voice. In the video we just watched, Veronica mentioned a bomb threat checklist. This checklist is saved on our SharePoint under the Safety Playbook in the Bomb Threat folder. Please make sure to print the checklist and keep it in a convenient place for you to get to in the event a bomb threat is received. A suggestion made by another employee is to keep the checklist under your keyboard. I really like this suggestion. Bomb threats are most received over the phone. If you do take a call where a threat has been made, remember to stay calm, courteous, and to not interrupt the caller. Make eye contact or signal a fellow coworker to notify them of the threat. The employee that you have signaled is to notify their supervisor or management immediately. 
keep the caller on the line as long as possible. Pretend you have difficulty hearing them to keep the caller on the line. And remember, do not hang up even if the caller does. Try to keep the caller talking to learn more information. Ask questions like, where is the bomb located? When will it go off? What does it look like? What kind of bomb is it? What will make it explode? Why are you doing this? Do you know we have a lot of people in here that could die? What is your name? Pay close attention to the background noise. What do you hear? Do you hear machines, vehicles, airplanes, or is it just quiet? What does the caller's voice sound like? Is it loud, deep, raspy? Is the caller's speech fast, slurred, or distorted? Does the caller have an accent? Document the time the call was received, the phone number the call came in as, and document exactly what the caller said. Remember, even when the caller hangs up, do not hang up your phone. Lay the receiver on your desk, and if you wear a headset, take it off and lay it on your desk. The management team will communicate to all employees that a bomb threat has been received. Employees will be asked to perform a quick and complete visual scan of their designated work area. You should listen for any unusual sounds and check for unusual odors as you proceed to your designated rally point. The designated rally point may be changed by management if the area is deemed unsafe. Employees are to communicate anything unusual to a member of the management team. Avoid using cell phones or two-way radios. Employees should take their personal belongings, such as a purse or a backpack with them as they proceed to the rally point. Employees will need to remain at the rally point until law enforcement has given the all clear to re-enter the building. You should not leave to go home without communicating to your supervisor. Verbal threats are less common, but they can happen. If a verbal threat is received, notify your supervisor or a member of the management team immediately. If the perpetrator leaves, make a note of which direction they went. Did they enter a vehicle? What kind of vehicle? Write down the threat exactly as it was communicated to you. You will also want to document a description of the person who made the threat. If you know their name or business name, document it. You will want to document their gender, their race, their body size, any distinguishing features such as tattoos, the type of clothing they were wearing, their hair and eye color, and a description of their voice. Again, was it loud, deep, did they have an accent? Your supervisor or a member of the management team will contact 911 and communicate to all employees to evacuate the building. Employees will meet at the branch's designated rally point. Written threats can also occur. If you receive a written threat, handle the document as little as possible. Notify your supervisor or member of the management team. Rewrite the threat exactly as is on another sheet of paper and note the following. The date and time the document was found any situation or conditions surrounding the discovery or delivery of the threat, the full names of all personnel who saw the threat, secure the original document. Do not alter the item in any way. If the document is small, place it in a bag or an envelope. 
Again, try to touch as little of the document as possible. If the document is large, do not move it. Management will secure the location. Email threats can also occur. If you receive an email threat, leave the message open on your computer. Notify your supervisor or any member of the management team. You will print, photograph, or copy the message to include the date and time sent. Your supervisor or member of the management team will contact 911 and communicate to all employees the need to evacuate the building. Employees will meet at the designated rally point. A suspicious item is anything that is reasonably believed to contain explosives, an IED, or other hazardous material that requires a bomb technician to further evaluate it. Potential indicators are threats, placement, and proximity of the item to people and valuable assets. Examples include unexplainable wires or electronics, other visible bomb-like components, unusual sounds, vapors, mist, or odors, generally anything that is hidden, obviously suspicious, and not typical should be deemed suspicious. If a suspicious item is found, do not touch it, tamper with it, or move the item. Immediately report the suspicious item to your supervisor or any member of the management team. You should always look at envelopes or packages before opening. A lot of us simply open an envelope or package without giving it a second thought. Characteristics of suspicious mail include the following. Fictitious, unfamiliar, or no return address handwritten or poorly typed address, address to a title only or an incorrect title, mailed from a foreign country, excessive postage, excessive string or tape on a package, misspelling of common words, restrictive markings such as confidential or personal, excessive weight, and or a fill of a powdery or foreign substance, discoloration or stains, shows a city or state in the postmark that does not match the return address. If you do feel that mail or a package is suspicious, do not open it or handle it. Leave it alone and notify a member of the management team. Keep others away from the area and secure the area until public safety arrives. If you open a letter or package with information claiming that you have been contaminated by opening it, yet there is no substance seen or felt, you most likely have not been contaminated. Management still needs to be notified and 911 needs to be called. If you open a letter or package and a foreign substance is present, notify management immediately. Place the letter back in the envelope or package and anyone that encountered the contents should immediately wash their hands with soap and water. If the substance got on your clothing, the clothing item should be removed and put in a plastic trash bag then you should wash your hands with soap and water again. Management will call 911 and a public safety team will be dispatched. Management will also turn off the airflow system, such as air conditioning or heating. All employees will be communicated with and asked to evacuate to the designated branch rally point.
we have covered a lot in our training session today. We hope that we never receive a bomb threat or a suspicious package. But if we do, we want everyone to be prepared. On a final note, every bomb threat requires professional judgment. We will engage local and federal law enforcement with any threat received. I hope you all have a great day and remember to stay safe and healthy. Thank you.